Yo, what's up guys? It's Yellowfin, and in this video, I am going to be going over the Christmas Collection Pack. Because now, I made the three other videos with Two-Tone Horror Show and, um, whatever the other one's called, Silver Screen, on what you can get from those packs, and then they released another tag with a new update, which is Christmas Collection, which will be starting simultaneously with Horror Show. So that Christmas Collection will be starting soon as well. And so I'm going to be going over the pack now for this, and if this might be a um, a tag that collection tag that you might want to go for in the collection series. So, Christmas collection, then let's get non-prize cars, and then we are going to be looking at the carbon fiber specifically, which is this. So let's see what we've got, starting from the very beginning. And not gonna lie, looking through this pack a bit, it does not look like too bad of a pack at all. So let's start from the very beginning, however. So first, we got the Renault Sport Clio RS.16. This is a average car. Most of the time fuse material, unless you kind of need a front wheel drive medium ground clearance low car, not low RQ car I mean, front wheel drive medium ground clearance low RQ car, then this is the right car for you. However, it also works well as just easy fuse material. So if you get this car, you really want to be too happy with it from a pack. Infinity QX60 all-wheel drive is just run-of-the-mill fuse material. Lamborghini Miara SV, as you see, I have it wishlisted. It is a great car for short drags, especially short Italian drags, where the Thanos Countach, which is the purple one, won't be able to catch up on the drag strip. So the Miara SV is definitely one to be happy about if you don't have it yet. Nitro RT is also just pretty generic fuse material. It's not really that useful of a car. I've fused it every time I've gotten it. The Delta Integrale Evolution is... It's mid-tier for the Lancias. It's it's the third best one, I'd say. Because the yellow one's the best. Then the nine, the other red one, I think that's the one from the 80s, is next best, in my opinion. Then it's this one, and then it's the black one. So, this one's sort of mid-tier. It's one you can't really... It's similar to, like, the Renault Sport Clio. If you don't have something in its sort of category yet, then it's useful to have. Super Crash Trek Sport is also similar to those cars. It's just a car that doesn't seem really too bad but it's nothing like crazy good. It's decently lightweight. It's got some pretty solid handling in zero to 60 and for 58 RQ, it's not too bad of one to have. Challenger SRT8 also sort of fits in that category as well. It's not the best, it's not the worst. If you don't have something in that area, then it might be a good one to keep. Otherwise, it, it can also work as fuse material too. Now the Cobalt SS Turbo, I actually have experience with this car because I have one max two through three and I use it all the time in clubs and it is an amazing car because it's got the top speed and the a bit of MRA to help it be better than most other low RQ front wheel drive cars. So this is the car that you want for front wheel drive fast stuff, especially if you don't have a Ford Focus. So the Cobalt SS Turbo, I'd say you guys should be definitely happy about it if you get it from a pack. Impreza WRX GC8G is just another Subaru that has similar stats to all the other ones. It's not the best, but it's also not one of like the trash ones. So similar to all the other cars that I've been talking about pretty much, it can work as fuse. It's not going to be fuse for me if I end up getting one, but it can work as fuse if you have the better options. But if you don't have one, then it'll be a good one to ha get and you'll probably be happy with it. Tuscan Convertible is an amazing car. 3.30 to 60 maxed out, 83 handling at 332. And it is definitely a very useful one to have, especially if you get it from a pack. It's basically the Tamora, but it'll lose on some tracks, I think, but I'm pretty sure it wins on other ones as well. So definitely a very useful car to have. And the XDR Dynamic S is an interesting one. It's good. It's just a good all-rounder. That's basically what it is. Has good MRA, good 0-60, to 60, pretty solid handling, four-wheel drive, medium ground clearance, and it's also a 2020 car too, which gives it a bit of a niche. So definitely one that is pretty solid of a car. Then we're moving on to the Epics now, and this is where it gets a bit more interesting. So Lotus Esprit V8. It's meh. It's just sort of meh. It's just your generic RQ65 Epic. It's not really anything too special. Same goes for this Lancer Evo right here. It just will lose to the Evo 4 mostly everywhere. So it doesn't really have much use. BMW X2, it's just kind of a low RQ Epic. It's basically just a bit of a better Ultra Rare. So Ultra Rares will beat it if they're maxed out, but then if you have the X2 maxed out, then it might beat some of the Ultra Rares because then it'll have ETB. At one star, though, it won't be doing anything against maxed ultra rares, and that's just kind of how it works for lower Q epics. Um, this Lancer, the Lancer Evo 10, isn't too bad because it does have 87 handling, so I'm pretty sure it maxes out with 97. So this one isn't too bad of one to have. It's just sort of mid-tier, similar to all the other cars I've kind of been talking about. 
911 Targa 4S, I haven't really seen anyone have anything useful with this car. It's just a Porsche that's not as good because it has four-wheel drive, which brings it up in our queue then. But really, if you're going to be using Porsche in the rain, which I don't think there ever really is very many wet Porsche events, then you probably won't get much use out of the 911 Targa 4S. BMW M4 is sort of mid-tier as well, like all these other cars. It's just a pretty solid car if you don't have anything better, but then it will you will get some use out of the BMW M4. Same for the TTS Coupe as well. This one isn't too bad because it will be useful against other the other medium ground clearance Audis, especially if it isn't something that requires medium ground clearance, because it can save you a bit of RQ then in that situation, and you can beat them mostly everywhere. Now, the Alfa Romeo Disco Volante 8C is an amazing car. This is definitely a very useful one that you should definitely be very happy about if you end up getting it from a pack. 97 handling, I think 3.4 or 3.3. Maxed out a 2 through 3, I can't really remember, I haven't really seen one maxed out in a while, but it is definitely a very useful one, I'd be very happy if I ended up with that from a pack. Bentley Flying Spur, also just kind of mid-tier, it has medium ground clearance, it's another heavy Bentley that doesn't have too great stats all around, but if you don't have any of the better options, then it will give you a bit of use. Roof RK Coupe, basically the best epic roof you can have now if you don't have the Yellowbird, I guess, which is the prize car, but outside of the prize car Yellowbird, this is the best epic roof you can have. Mine's still at stock, but I did, I think mine, yeah, mine is still at stock, but it is definitely a good car, and it will definitely be useful if you have it maxed out as well, because it still actually has its MRA. TVR Griffith, Griffith is just another good high RQ car that, if you have it maxed out, will help you beat a lot of legendaries or just other epics in general. It's just an amazing car to have. 911 Targa 4S is what helped me win my, which car was it? My Lancia LC2. This car helped me win my Lancy LC2, and now this is a Porsche that is useful with having four-wheel drive, because this one will help you a lot in the rain compared to the 911 Targa 4S, that one, the older model, and it does have the 0-60 to 60 and the stats to keep up with more of the lower, the other ultra rares or the lower tier epic Porsche that are epic as well. And this one will actually, you'll get still your wins out of it with having it. Bentley Continental Super Sports Convertible, it's basically a low version of the Flying Spur, that is actually useful then. It's this is this is the car that makes this car mid-tier. It's this car and then the other two Bentleys and then the medium ground clearance one as well. They're the cars that make this Bentley mid-tier then, so this is definitely one to be happy with as well. Now moving on to legendaries, we've got an interesting collection here. Cayenne GTS isn't or no, it's the Macon that's the good one. This one is meh. This is just pretty mad tier. It used to be an epic, and now it's a legendary. That it used to be an epic a while ago, actually, so probably not anytime soon. But it's still sort of mad tier. It's just a car that's you might get a bit of use out of, I guess. Vanquish Zagato has an amazing picture, but also I haven't seen anyone get too much use out of it. It's just your generic RQ81, low RQ legendary. You'll get some use out of it, but it'll also lose to a lot of maxed epics. This Bentley Continental also has nothing too special going for it. It's a convertible, I guess. It's got the convertible niche to it. But otherwise, it's just another legendary Bentley. Same goes for the Continental GT number 9 edition by Mulliner. X6M is a pretty useful one, especially because of that um, German medium ground clearance daily event. This one will be pretty useful if you have it. And also just in general, it is a bit of, it is more of a better version compared to the Cayenne GTS. This one you'll get a bit more use out of having. Nissan GTR R35, it's still getting crazy amounts of use because of the JPT event still going on with the new update. So if you get this one, you can definitely be happy about having it. 911 GT3 RS is still an amazing car. It also has two-tone as well, and it is definitely a very useful one to have. It's basically just a good handling Porsche that does not have the crazy MRA of some of the lower RQ Porsche that don't have the handling, like my 911 GT2 RS. This will be done the twisties, but the 911 GT2 will be all, on all the fast. So still, definitely a great car to have. Lamborghini Gallardo Super Leggera isn't too bad, I guess. It's just your sort of mid-tier Lamborghini. This 720S Spider is great. It's crazy good. That 0-60 to 60 is absolutely amazing. It will reach 102 handling as well, so that's definitely one to be very happy about. Then this Gallardo, it's just, it's it's a bit of a higher tier Lamborghini. It's not like the best tier Lamborghini, but it's also not like a worst tier Lamborghini. This is a Lamborghini to be happy about if you get from a pack. And then the Stelvio is just straight up amazing. And the Regera as well. Both of those two are definitely cars that you should be intensely happy about if you get it from this pack. So this pack, it's not too bad, especially if you are lacking in some of the lower tier categories like 
me, I guess. There's lots of cars that I'd be happy about with if I opened up this pack. There is lots of stuff that I wouldn't be able to complain about, really, because there is a lot of good cars. And there are some pretty strong ones as well, especially in the Epic category. There are four really nice cars that definitely is definitely cars that you should look out for if you get from the pack. And it is pretty loaded with some strong legendaries as well to collect. And then ultra rares, there isn't really a bad ultra rare, I guess you can say. The Q60 all-wheel drive is bad, the Nitro RT is bad, but otherwise, all the rest, you are getting a decently solid ultra rare. So yeah, I'd say this pack isn't too bad of one to look out for if you're looking to get one. Or looking to collect them all. Or, I mean, like, looking to have this as your collection series to go all in for. That's the right words I was looking for. And so yeah, definitely a pretty solid pack, I'd say. So that's going to conclude it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this type of content, make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell. Do all that cool stuff. I'm Yellowfin. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.